everybody, and welcome to Books Unbound, the podcast where we unbind books to get to their hearts with your hosts, us. It's Ariel and Raylene. Yola. So true. <laughs> Yola! <laughs> Uh, I forget that. if we talked about, talked about this on the podcast. I'm trying to make Yola happen. <laughs> it's a mixture of yo, which Raylene and I, for some reason, have said to each other for years. Yeah. Like, yo, yo, yo that's yo. how we always text a conversation <laughs> start. Yeah. Um, but then also, Ola. So I thought it was like... <laughs> I thought it was like really obvious what I was doing. But <laughs> then so I asked several people, I was like, Yola. And they're like, oh, hey. And I was like, what do you think I mean by Yola? And they're like, like YOLO. I remember you said that. And yeah. I was like, okay, maybe this isn't working. <laughs> it's but not you know what? We what? Want. <laughs> you just said it without us talking about it. Yeah. So maybe it is catching on. Also, another friend of mine uses it when he talks to me. He's like, Yola. And I'm like, hey, listen, oh my it gosh. just takes two. Yeah. It just takes three. <laughs> and there you go. And then you got a movement on your hands. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. So, uh, gosh, this is an interesting ep because it's it's uh, the the circle of life, uh, really, <laughs> really casting its its highs and its lows over here in Ariel's world. Mm. As you guys know, of last week's episode was a very joyous one, a really happy. Yeah engagement news filled yeah. ep and uh we're gonna be doing a mailroom segment at the end reading some comments from you guys mm -hmm. and a few of them that i pulled are about the engagement because people had some concerns oh um it's <laughs> <laughs> intriguing so, we'll be talking about that again later but um yeah it was obviously such a fun happy time and then the last week of my life has been so stressful yeah, and difficult so basically uh, basically my dog is sick and everyone who has a pet anyone who has a pet knows that that is the worst it's yeah. the worst when your dog or your cat or your fish or your guinea pig whoever whatever they are it's just the worst because you're obviously responsible for them mm -hmm. so you want to make sure that you're doing everything you can but also you're not a dog so you don't know what certain things <laughs> yeah. mean i'm like trying to communicate with doug about what's going yeah. on tell and, me your uh, woes tell me what's <laughs> what, what are you feeling little doug um so yeah it's been a really rough week with 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 doug hopefully things are gonna work out i'm not sure though um he's old he's 10 so it's it's we're, we're in the this is the really tricky part right now Raylene with mm. my pets like they're t they're 11 10 and 9 years old oh wow so they're all starting to reach this elder state yeah where things yeah. are starting to go wrong all the time and it's like incredibly stressful so that in and of itself was stressful but then I started to have medical woes. Oh, like, come no. on, guys. Can we get a break over here? <laughs> <laughs> the world is just balancing out. Too much happiness. It was like, we need Yeah, to... they were like, your mini truck, your engagement. How about some of this? Yeah. And uh, yeah, again, I think it'll probably be fine with me. Um, but yesterday I had to go get an x-ray, yeah. which was fun. And uh, today I had to get blood work done, Ew. which was fun. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You're not good with needles, are you? Or hospitals or surgery. I just don't <laughs> like having blood drawn. That's like the specific thing I don't like. Or anything to do with yeah. surgery, but that's besides the point. I really, really don't <laughs> like needles. I actually had blood drawn recently too, just, you know, routine, whatever. And yeah. I made Kyle come with me. And while the person yeah. was like taking my blood, I was just like, I have to look the other way. Like I can't, I just can't look at it. <laughs> I hate it. That's really interesting because, I, well, I really don't hate it. I find it really interesting. I wish I did. And I was on the edge of asking the the nurse practitioner a question. And then I realized, no, no, there's no way to ask that question and not be a creep. Because oh. the question I wanted to ask was, have you ever, like, noticed someone's blood is, like, way a different color? Oh. Like, are our... Are, are, like, does everyone have blood the same color yeah. is what I was going to yeah. ask. And I was like, I sound like a serial killer. <laughs> also, you can just Google that. Just, just satisfy exactly. that curiosity that's, later. That's what I mean. I was like, this doesn't need to be asked out loud in a hospital <laughs> to like, a what? nurse. <laughs> like, is all blood the same? Like, do you notice color variations? Like, Yeah, that makes it sound what like you, you... want to see blood more than you should. <laughs> exactly. It makes it sound like I um, want to paint with blood or something. <laughs> like, I need shades of red. Oh I was like... 
I it's a question that came up because of curiosity. <laughs> yeah. But I'm going to hold that one in. Yeah, that and was instead, wise. Instead, say it to twenty thousand people on the internet. <laughs> but at least you can back it up by your understanding that it does sound crazy. <laughs> No, exactly. The context is I didn't ask it in the in the actual inappropriate yeah, moment. Yeah. Um, there was another, there was an old lady also getting her blood drawn, and that was part of the equation. I was like, "What am I gonna? <laughs> I, she's gonna hear me. <laughs> she's just gonna like, be like, nope. <laughs> I'm just scared. gonna sit here politely and not worry about it.' But yeah, anyways, it was. It's. I think I'm gonna be fine. I'm sure it's all gonna be okay. But it's just been kind of a up and down sort of a time good oh, lord oh man yeah yep 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 <laughs> yep what about you raylene do you have a tale to tell i kind of do yeah and mine is good slightly more happy slightly more uplifting so maybe i'm glad we started with you bad news first <laughs> okay. good news next. yeah get it out of um, the way. so on friday this past weekend i celebrated uh, a little party with my friends i think i've talked yes. about this a little bit um totally so we have been starting to celebrate the sabbats which are eight holidays that happen throughout the year and um it's been fun so we've really decided yeah. to lean in this year though like this year we were like we need to like make a, some kind of headdress or headpiece for every single event we want to totally. dress up we do thematic yes. food so the one yes. that we just celebrated was called imbolc i-m-b-o-l-c okay. for anyone wondering um not in bulk like costco um, <laughs> <laughs> like which some people barn. think I'm saying. Um, so this is in bulk, which <laughs> it was on February 1st. We celebrated it on February 2nd. But this is about celebrating how it's still winter, but spring is just around the corner. And like okay. trying to like enjoy that the last, you know, dregs of winter, like not trying to rush yeah. through it and try to enjoy it. And some of the thematic foods are milk. <laughs> so we made a lot of food oh. with milk. <laughs> We oh, made, interesting. I made potato leek soup. My friend made a whipped goat cheese dip. And my other friend oh, made cool. a, like, a custard pie thing. And it was all very delicious. Um, but Did what you, happened... Like, ha what? Was this like a lactate necessary party? Like everyone, pretty much, like, yeah. Yeah, like, you gotta just do your best to get lactose. through it. Yeah, <laughs> but it was all very delicious and very. I fun. bet, yeah. And we also did like a little ritual where we planted daisy seeds and like lit candles oh, and stuff. Like my friend Julia, really like cute. really worked hard on it to make it a really cool event for us, which was really that's fun. Awesome. So we had a really good time, but we also got talking about like what are our goals for the year? Like wh what? Who do we want to yes. be this year? And we started just like having a lot of discussions about like mindfulness and nature and all this stuff. Self-improvement, you said, Exactly. Right? Yeah. So it all kind of started with that. But we came up with this cool thing that we've been doing that I wanted to share because I think other people oh. should try it. So we basically we've we do this a lot as I'm sure a lot of people do, where we're like, oh, we should go hiking every weekend this year. Or like, we should do this thing. Yeah. We should all be really healthy. But then it falls apart. Like we only see each other totally. maybe once or twice a month. So it's hard to like really yeah. stay accountable with that kind of stuff. And so we were trying to come up with an idea, like how can we keep each other accountable on our mm. goals and like just everything we want to be doing for self-improvement. And so I was like, let me just like do some searching and see if I can find a medium hmm. that's like a place where we can all gather and like, you know, share our ideas and whatnot. And so I went on to Google to see what Google had and Google Slides has become my new best friend. So oh, I've never used it before. Google okay, Slides yeah. is kind of like a PowerPoint situation. I, totally, but better, but way it's better. It's way better. <laughs> it's so good. And so what we've been doing on there is we've created what we've just called a uh, retrospective, um, like a mindfulness oh. retrospective for the year. And so it's like a shared journal almost, but like with visuals and oh. it's very cool. So like, um, for example, one slide like we've just been like asking each other questions that we each have to answer each day. So one of them was like, yeah. what's a video game that um, reflects our natural world and like explain how it makes you feel? So mm. that was one that Julia did and we responded to that. And um, I said a short hike because mountains. Um, and so yeah, just little things like that. But I also did one today that was share with me your screen time. 
Let's all take a look at that and see how That's we're feeling about that. so cool. Okay, so, I love this, like, yeah, prompt so, but thing. But it's really fun because okay. of the visual aspect. So, like, yes. you can add, like, really cool images and GIFs and stuff within the slides. Yeah, yeah. And so every single one is kind of like a little scrapbook page almost. Like, it's, like, totally. collages. And it's just really fun. Like, it's a fun visual medium. It's cool to do with my friends because we all have, like, different artistic styles and, like, ideas for what we want to do. So it's just, like, wow, this, this cool little... this is such a great idea. It's this cool little hub. And I kind of want to make one with you. <laughs> I want to have one with yeah. like, all my like I want I'm making one for myself too just to use as kind of like a personal journal almost and I just feel like it's a really cool idea for anyone who wants to like get into journaling I but feels like idea. you know doing it physically is too much work and like you know trying to make it aesthetically pleasing is a lot of work but it's so easy yeah. on Google Slides and it's I think it's fun it's because genius. we're gonna do it for the whole year we'll be able to go back through and see like what's yeah, changed yeah. or what we've actually accomplished and then next year we'll do another one and I'm just like I'm really loving it. I think it's a cool tool. Did you, did you, so you found this online, like you'd found somebody else who no, recommended this No, I made idea? it up. It no. was my idea. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we were trying to figure out if there was an app, like a mindfulness app that you could share with people, oh. but there wasn't. And I was like, I bet Google has something we could use. And so I found Google Slides Google and I was like, 80,000 apps. I was like, yeah. I don't know if this is going to work, but yeah. And so I found just a pro tip for anyone who wants to try using it. It's a lot easier to use yeah. on the computer. But the commenting aspect is easier to use on your phone. I don't know why, uh, okay. but it's cool because okay. you can comment on each slide. So it's almost right. like a private social media also, which is something that I think is really cool. Like if that you want to be really sharing cool. photos with your like one friend or two friends or whatever, you can have this little like private hub. So I don't know. I just feel like there's a lot of possibilities there. And really, really I think this is it. genius. I think this is genius for a lot of reasons. I mean, the fact that you could, I didn't even think about the fact that you could comment on it, but yeah. that's so cool. But like, it's kind of makes sense. Like you are sitting down to do the act of the collage building. And yeah. then once it's done, then you're going to lay back on your phone and respond to your friends and, yeah. and check in on that. That's yeah. really cool. Do you get, I'm sure you can set up email notifications. So you get well, actually, an email when I was gonna, someone comments. I was going to mention that. Yeah. You can't set up a notification for when it's been edited. So if somebody adds a new slide, you have to like let them know or just wait until somebody notices there's a new slide, but you do get notifications yeah. for comments, which is handy. So yeah. So you could just leave a comment that's like, I just updated this slide and then that would send out a exactly. notification. But I think you're totally right because the thing is, like with a doc like a google doc mm -hmm. it's just not as um like a whiteboard as much yeah. obviously right with it's this you can text. move things around wherever you want you can, like moving images yeah. and text around is really easy and they have like an image search function through the actual thing as well as oh. gifs and stickers so like you can just make it really That's fun genius. it's almost like a it that feels like so myspace cool. or something but like within slides like i don't know it's really cool it feels like a the, little the, the idea of a slide too feels so contained yes. in a solid way yeah that you're like you're saying like you're like this slide we're going to be doing this thing yeah. and then once it's done you start a new slide that feels like a whole different exactly. thing just like you're saying like a scrapbook page. and you can That's make as many cool as you idea. want like there's no limits you could do whatever the hell yeah. you want and it's yeah i don't know i'm just really excited about it and it's like I, i'm excited to check it every day and see what my friends made like what did uh, they what question did they ask that i can now answer and then i have like this whole list that i've been adding to of like what questions do i want to ask them and yeah it was fun like one of my slides was just like what's something that you've done for yourself recently for like self-care like what's the most recent self-care yeah, yeah. thing you've done and so i want to like ask questions like that periodically like every couple of months and yeah. be like have you been doing more things for yourself like it's it's cool to like reflect because i feel That's like it's a really cool idea yeah i love it Thank you. Thanks yeah. for sharing that. Because I can really imagine a lot of people being like, whoa, wait, this is exactly what I've been looking yeah. for. Yeah, it's awesome. And sometimes you actually, it's better when you're using a program that's not built for the purpose that you want it for. Because <laughs> like in this way, it's never going to become a social media addiction yeah. thing. It's always going to just be Google Slides. <laughs> exactly. It's not going anywhere. <laughs> I was so confused when you started talking about a newfound fascination with Google Slides because I am on this weekend hosting a party with my, oh my God, I was gonna say boyfriend. I guess he's my <laughs> fiance with my partner. Um, and with uh, with my brother, the three of us are oh. co-hosting a party Whoa. with, um, I think overall there's gonna be like 10 or 12 people there yeah. and it's a PowerPoint party. Oh. Have I told you about this? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh my god okay i got really excited about this idea i forget where i heard about it i think i heard about it like years ago and i just ever since thought it would be so much fun okay it's basically just everyone has to present a powerpoint <laughs> presentation oh but god. it can truly be about anything like it can be like 
why A Knight's Tale is my favorite movie. Oh, I love that. Or how my vacation last year went or yeah. like like literally anything. And I like, we explained in the invite, like it can be educational. Like if you want to just teach something yeah. that you know about, or if you want to be like what I've learned uh, in this job mm -hmm. or whatever, like it could be educational or it can just be comedy. Like yeah. you can just be like why I hate. <laughs> this book or and this like movie. with powerpoints the the opportunity for like visual comedy is so like exactly <laughs> yeah exactly so we're literally so we're actually this saturday oh and it's been planned for a few weeks now this saturday is the powpoint party and i'm still not 100 percent sure what my powerpoint mm. presentation is going to oh be gosh. about i can't wait to hear about it after this is done like this is isn't this fun? you and i having so much fun with slides who knew <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's my new favorite app. Like, truly, it's my favorite thing to, to look at and That's to work so, on. I love that. Yeah. That's so, so cool. Um, yeah, and I feel like at the end of the year, you guys could just do a big PowerPoint party and go <gasps> through the whole slideshow. Oh, that's so true. Yeah, because like that's we already so have cute. like 10 slides and we just started this like a few days ago. <laughs> so that's I can only awesome. imagine what we'll have by the end of the year. <laughs> yeah, that's really, really cool. I also bet it would actually be really easy, not that you would want to, but like it would be really easy to export as a PDF yeah. and then have it printed like into a physical book oh, if you wanted that's that. That's a fun idea too. Like, Cause yeah, it's really- If somebody ever did that. Yeah. That's really interesting. Yeah. I love that. Well, well, the only other update I wanted to give was about weather. As you and I, <laughs> for some reason, find it's important to keep everyone mm -hmm. updated mm -hmm. about our weather situation. So I'll just let you know that uh, we had a giant storm. Oh. It was- it's probably the storm of the year, well, like snow wise. Yeah. It was crazy. And what was what's funny is that like the last two storms I've been getting so many alerts. You oh. know, like when your phone's like, Oh yeah. Careful, weather warning. It's yeah. gonna be a big storm. Don't drive. Stay safe. Make sure that you're okay. And it's like, oh my gosh, okay. And like there's been two other times this year yeah. where we've gotten these weather alerts and the storm's nothing. It's like whatever. <laughs> you're like, you that was it. barely that was nothing. This time, I didn't get any notifications. <laughs> dumped. <laughs> and suddenly, like, it was just, it's feet of snow. It's like oh four God. feet of snow outside. Holy. It's so much snow. It's so much snow. <laughs> that sounds like a Thankfully, lot. it was crazy. It's like crazy. I'm like, what happened? Huh? <laughs> it's just, it's just like, out of nowhere. Like, Saturday, it just like, it, Saturday was the main day. It was just kept coming. Yeah. It just kept coming. Sunday kept snowing oh and it wasn't God. as much as saturday but it was just building building yeah. building and then monday we had snow on and off and connor was at a conference over the weekend and he was supposed to fly home on monday mm -hmm. and his flight just full-on got canceled oh like God. not just delayed like he was just fully canceled like, no. and moved to tuesday <laughs> they're like no one's flying in and out of halifax so huh. um yeah but i got a i got a message from someone on the comment section of our last episode that was like are you okay i heard about the storm winter a snow storm and i was like oh yeah we're fine that's funny <laughs> i didn't even I'd hear about the know. storm i didn't even know about it i'm in canada i know <laughs> yeah it's it's uh i don't know i think it's just if you live in canada you can't be surprised when there's snow no like it's just like yeah it snowed a bunch that's okay it happens yeah i had a snow <laughs> day a okay. couple of weeks ago because it just all of a sudden same thing like it was just huge buckets of snow and i was like i'm not going anywhere so i stayed home yeah it was great but then it was exactly all, it's i can still see snow outside but it's it's not bad it's all gone well that's the thing right now there's so much snow outside it's <laughs> kind of crazy it's kind of like i actually so <laughs> i had to go um yesterday to the hospital like i said to get my x-ray and i get to the car and I had, like, I knew, you know, it takes half an hour to get to the hospital. So I got into my car. I walked up to my car 30 minutes before I needed to be at the mm -hmm. hospital, which is not actually good planning because if anything goes wrong, you're late, right? Yeah. So I walk up to my car and boom, <laughs> it's covered in snow. No. And I'm like, no, I didn't think about this. And so I start attacking it with my thing. <laughs> yeah. And my dad comes out and he's like, oh, God, yeah, we forgot. Uh, like, do you want me to shovel you out? Because the other thing was the whole driveway yeah. is obviously Good full luck. of snow. <laughs> and I was like, we don't have time. I jumped in. And because it's a Jeep, yeah, you're lucky it's I a just Jeep. like... <laughs> and like pushed my way out of it. it was epic and my neighbor was walking by as it was happening and she's like wow that was no problem in that cool jeep and i was like see ya ma'am and i drove off <laughs> aerial out <laughs> that's awesome yeah i will never 
have a car that doesn't have four wheel drive. It's I just I'm in too many situations where it helps. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Where yeah. I'm just like another time saved by the Jeep. Good lord. Yeah, that's my dream. I need that. Yeah, you need four wheel drive. Do you still really want a Bronco? Oh yes. Oh, is yes. that your dream car still? Yes. Yeah. The problem is my actual dream Bronco is like from the sixties. Um, yeah, it's like the actual It's so expensive and there's no way I'll ever be able to get one of those. But maybe I'll get one yeah. of the new ones. We'll see. Yeah. yeah. They're still cool. They are really cool. They're still really cool. Yeah. I feel like my dream car, I think right now, is a Jeep, but like an electric one mm. or a hybrid one. Yes. Um, and one that it probably has four doors. Because having two doors is actually extremely annoying. It sucks. <laughs> It's the worst. <laughs> there is a couple of things about it that is, are great. Like, it's so easy to park it because it's so little. Yeah. Like, it's not actually a very long car at all. Mm -hmm. So it's so easy to park it. I feel really nimble <laughs> and, like, I don't I feel, yeah, agile. But if anyone wants to ride in my car, if it's ever more than two people, I'm like, oh, this is a nightmare. Yeah. Um, it's not fun. So Let yeah, me tell but you. I feel like the four-wheel drive, the four-door Jeeps, they look too big to me. I want something <laughs> in the middle. Mm. <laughs> like, I don't need that much trunk space. I think that's the problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, they add the extra seats and an extra long trunk. And I'm like, I know what you're thinking. Isn't this a book podcast? <laughs> you're right. Let's move on. <laughs> All right. Let's move on to talking about books. Hell yeah. The reason for the season. <laughs> for the podcast. Um, okay. What? What? Tell me, Raylene. Just tell me everything, damn it. What are you reading? What did you read? What do you what are you thinking? Okay. Philosophically, oh. how do you feel about books this week? <laughs> <laughs> I'm loving books this week. I'll start I'll okay. start with that. I um have started using my e-reader almost exclusively. Oh and yeah. I'm obsessed mm. with that. Um yeah. I've just been like, you know, loading up something from the library that I have yep. on my shelf already, so I'm still tackling my physical TBR, but I'm reading it on my totally. e-reader so I can read it in the dark. I can read it anywhere. Yep. And I'm just, I'm really feeling jazzed about the e-reader situation. So mm -hmm. that's that's where I'm at. I uh, I know you predicted once that I'm going to get rid of all of my physical books and become an e-reader person. And I'm not saying that that's going to happen yet, but I'm like, I could see myself being like 25% of the way there at this Same. point. I'm like, <laughs> there's so much room on this thing. And for some reason, having a large <laughs> amount of books on my e-reader doesn't stress me out the same way having a large amount of unread books on my totally. physical shelf does because I don't totally. see them. I don't know. It's right. like a psychological thing. So I've been thinking about that yeah. a lot recently. So we'll see if I ever <laughs> buy really... a book again. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen to me, but... First of all, hmm. I'm going to start out by telling you what book I finished because okay. I read a book and I loved it. And that is Lesser Known Monsters of the 21st Century by Kim Fu. Kim Fu was born in Vancouver in 1987 to immigrant parents from Hong Kong and studied creative writing at the University of BC. She has published two novels, a book of poetry, and the short story collection. Last year, she won the Danuta Gleed Literary Award, which is an annual prize that recognizes the best first collection of short fiction published in English by a Canadian author. So, yes, I was reading this last week and briefly talked about it, but I had only read the first couple of stories, so I wasn't sure right. how it was going to go. But, my God, I loved mm. it. I oh, loved good. it, Ariel. And oh, that cool. is so rare with a short story collection. That's like, so sick. Yeah, I... And I was like, this was a book that I was like, I don't know if I'll ever like read that in the next year or two. Like I had no intentions to read it anytime soon, just randomly picked it up. And so now I'm feeling like I need to follow that impulse more. Like just if something sticks out to you for some reason, just go for it. Um, because I, yeah, so I beautiful. absolutely. What was the name of our beautiful friend over there at Coach House? Lindsay. I mean, yes, Lindsay. Lindsay. Yeah, Lindsay. Thank you, Thank Lindsay. you for, si like this was fully a recommendation from Lindsay. This wasn't even on my yeah. radar. She sent it over and I'm so glad that she did because now I'm like, ah, I love Lindsay, that. I trust you with my life, basically. Um, send, me, <laughs> send me anything you want to send. I trust you. Um, because yeah, this is, it's just like perfectly suited to me. Uh, it's got some like Black Mirror vibes, like I mentioned, but it's also like funny and dark. And there's a couple of cool, stories that are yeah. kind of like horror adjacent. And it just like ticked all the boxes for me. Like I just loved every single story. Every single story was totally different from the last one. And they were all written in such a way that just made them really easy to read. And 
just so huh. enjoyable. Like, yeah, there's magical yeah. realism, um, horror, sci-fi. Like, there's all sorts of different genres going on. So it's kind of hard to define this collection. And I, I don't know if there's really a through line, like through, okay. through that you know that connects all of them. There might be. Uh, maybe I just didn't catch it. But I loved this. I have a yeah. I have got? a question for you. Okay, hit me with okay. it. The thing about short story collections is yes. that usually there's such high variance. Yes. At least in my, uh, uh, not opinion, but my experience yeah, of yeah, reading yeah. short story collections, I'll like love one of the stories. The next four are mid. Then totally. I read a good one and then two mid and then another good one. Mm -hmm. Or it can just, or it can be more even, like a lot of really good ones, but yeah. also a, a lot that I don't like. What was the variance like here? For me, the variance was like, Every single story, pretty much, I loved. There was maybe two that were like a four out of five instead of a five. Okay, but wow. Yeah, but there I were none that saying. I disliked. There were none that I hated. Wow. And there were none that I felt okay. were solidly mid. Like, they were all superior. Like, they were all wow. so good. It made me feel huh. like, I feel like I haven't felt this since I read, like, Skin by um, Roald Dahl, where it's wow. just like, every single story is banger after Whoa. banger. Like, it just worked for me. Like, I know that obviously yeah, yeah, not yeah. everyone's going to feel the same way, but I. it also does get really pretty solid reviews. If you look this up on Goodreads, um, a lot of other people also are like, wait, this is awesome. And I don't know. It's, huh. I think it's because partly because I go into short story collections with kind of low expectations because of the variance that usually happens. And so I was yeah. just like, every single story, I was like, wait, no, this is awesome. Wait, no, this one's awesome wow. too. And what was cool is that a lot of them are quite short. So mm. uh, I like a short story that's actually short, if you know what I mean. Like I find <laughs> yeah, I do. if a short story, exactly. if a short story is 70 pages long, it's like, okay, it's no longer a short story. It's kind of more yeah. like a novella now. And I like it when it's just like, it gets to the point. There's no like dragging through like, you know, a bunch of exposition. It's just kind of like, no, here's what's happening. Totally. And we're in it. It's happening. Totally. And a lot of them are kind of like weird things. Like the last story, which was one of my favorites is about just like a normal woman and all of a sudden, all food tastes bad to her, not just to Ooh, her, but to everyone. Interesting. It, like it's something that just takes over the whole world, and so all of a sudden, yeah. everyone's like, "What do we? What do we do? Like, how? Like, because we uh, people love food. Obviously, that's a, just a thing. <laughs> yeah. And so it's like, what would happen to a world where suddenly nobody cares about food? And so she like starts up this business of trying to like give people like the sensations of what food used to taste like. And it's just like, whoa, what a weird idea. But like, it was so interesting. And yeah. um, so that's just an example of what this book has in store for you. That but yeah. seems really cool. It was so, so good. So, so would you put this in your top favorite short story collections of all time absolutely. now? Absolutely. Absolutely, wow. I would. Um, yeah, and I'll actually be posting a, a picture on our Instagram of my little stack of my favorite short story collections. So cool. that is there for you guys if you want some more recommendations. And I want, I want more recommendations, too, because there's so many short story collections out there. It's hard to mm. kind of figure out which ones, which ones will work for me. But yeah, this really worked for me. So I'm so happy. It's been a while. This is like my first favorite book of the year you know like it's already yeah it's up there so i'll have to read some pretty good books to to top this so yeah do you want me to tell you what i'm currently reading or do you want to do you want to tell me what's going on over there first well <laughs> there's nothing going on over there <laughs> not much really not much i'm really glad that you read such a great book i'm trying to remember hold on let's do a little statistics Ooh, moment okay okay yeah in 2023, all right, let's shoot back to last year. Okay. In 2023, the first book I read was Ducks by Kate Beaton. Really liked it. Thought mm -hmm. it was great. Gave mm -hmm. it four stars. Wasn't a new personal favorite, but I really liked it. Okay. And then I read Wedding Toasts I'll Never Give by Ada Calhoun, that essay collection. And if you recall, I loved that book. It became one of my favorite books of the year. Mm -hmm. um, I then read a book I didn't really like, a book I really liked. And then a book I really like, you know what I mean? Like yeah. it was like up and down. But the the first book that I read, okay, so this is interesting. The first book that I read, I guess, so therefore that became a new favorite yeah. was on January 18th. Oh, It was That Wedding Toast I'll Never Get. Mm. Then the second book and the third book, True Grit and the Blue Castle. Hell yeah. I read those May 8th and May 19th. Yeah, big gap. So there was a big gap between the first, like, really amazing, incredible book of the year versus the next one. Yeah. I say that because what you just said was really interesting to me, mm. where you were like, this is the first great book of the year for you. Yeah. I'm like, 
it took over a month but at the, obviously at the same time you haven't read that many as much as you usually exactly do, so i've it's probably read longer. half the amount of books that i normally read at this time last year yeah but i'm not feeling i guess it's a little tricky because uh, a bunch of the books i've read this year are rereads yeah so I like I read A Prayer for the Crown Shy, which was good, but I didn't love mm -hmm. Animal Farm. Yeah, it's still Obviously. my favorite book, yeah. but it's not the same because I didn't discover a new favorite. Mm -hmm. Then I read um, The Life Changing Magic of Tidying Up. Loved it, but again, it wasn't like rediscovering right. something. And then so uh, 10 Arguments for Deleting Your Social Media Right Now. Again, loved it, but it wasn't discovering something new. <laughs> And so I haven't read a new favorite book, and I think that that's what's pissing me off. Yeah, I think you, you <laughs> I need think... to explore and find that perfect. I'm like, where's movie? something cool and new? I don't know. I'm uh, just follow your I'm heart. Ready. Whatever your heart <laughs> is, ready, really. is asking for, just give it. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, anyways, that was just a little aside. The book that I have been reading this week is Letters to Eugene, <gasps> Correspondence mm. 1977 to 1987 by Hervé Guibert and Eugene Savitskaya. I'm not too sure. Uh-oh. <laughs> Something, I did have an epiphany partway through the book, okay? Because I okay. wasn't really liking it. Yeah. But it wasn't, I wasn't hating it. I was just a little like, hmm, hmm. <laughs> Okay. Uh, so it's a it's love it's love letters, which is interesting. It's love letters between these two guys in the seventies and eighties, mm -hmm. the late seventies, early eighties. And I'm like, that's cool and everything, but what's like the plot? Right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And this is what's kind of tricky because it's the real letters, and I think basically I happen to have it here. The first book of letter collections that I read is um, eighty four Charing Cross Road. This set. The bar so unbelievably high <laughs> yeah, for what I want. <laughs> yeah, what I want from a letter collection because not only were these real letters between two real people, this was their actual full correspondence, mm -hmm. but it had this incredible plot line yeah. of like this friendship growing and the war happening and all of these things that like they they went through. I like it had an incredible arc. Yeah, totally. So I think that's I'm. I've had to put that aside because I'm like, obviously oh. not all letters can be that. Yeah. Like every letter collection can't be that. And so this really is just these two guys who like form a friendship because they're both writers. Mm. And so one of them writes to the other one is like, I just read your book and I really loved it. And I wanted to give you my book. And then the other guy reads it and he's like, wow, I really liked your book. Um, like, I hope we can meet sometime. And the other guy's like, I'm actually writing, I actually write articles and I would love to do an article about your writing. So they start through like a little bit of a professional relationship right. and then they clearly kind of fall in love. Mm -hmm. But the thing that's like a little stressful about it is that one of them, Hervé, who I believe is the bigger writer, like I think Hervé is like an actual big writer at mm -hmm. the time and then Eugene is not as much. Or is it the other... Yeah, no, I think that's right. It's kind of complicated. <laughs> Anyways, um, he's like obsessed with Eugene. Oh. He's like obsessed with him. Mm -hmm. And he'll send like 10 letters <gasps> to every one letter that Eugene sends. And it's like really stressful because oh I'm just God. like, dude, either break up with him <laughs> or like respond. Like I'm finding it so yeah. rude. But in that way, it is really interesting. It's really interesting because hmm. I'm like, wow, I am actually learning and having opinions about this relationship. Yeah. That's really interesting. The beginning of the book explains that when Hervé died, he left like notes in his will about what to do with his mm. writings and everything. Yeah. And and the note, one of the notes was like, don't publish any of my letters except for the ones to Eugene, Ooh. if Eugene wants that. Yeah. Like he gave permission. So that is very interesting. Like he actually gave permission for this to be a book. Okay. And so I don't feel any moral <laughs> guilt reading it. Okay. I want to read you this one letter because I thought it was, this came part way through and I was like, this is... This is important. Okay. <clears throat> Paris, January 16th, 1984. Eugene, do you have snow there? We haven't had any and I miss it. Despite your advice, I'm very sad, reduced to writing letters to Eugene who doesn't respond, who plays the role of the silent one so well. Do my letters, it's dangerous to write at least, make you happy? Do they make you laugh, exhaust you, annoy you? Or are they a public joke? I kind of don't care. 
I'm afraid of cooling off. And that's why I write you like someone who keeps moving so he doesn't go numb, reassured that he still sees breath coming out of his mouth. I write you more than I should. I have several letters in the queue and could even make you think, with the help of a friend, that I'm still alive when I've long since been dead. All of my daily activities feel senseless and bland. The days are so gray. I don't force myself to write you. If only I could keep myself from it, I would sure get some sign from you. Maybe out of worry, but that's too cruel a step to take. It's letters that force my hand in those moments when I ought to forget you. When you're holding a book or performing some other task. Write me. Je t'embrasse, my Eugene Hervé. Isn't that so stressful? Yeah. <laughs> it's so stressful, but it was really interesting because... This letter, exact, almost like exactly halfway mm. through, changed the book for me. Oh. Because I was like, okay, part one, it is toxic. It's not supposed to not be toxic. Right. It is a little toxic. And, I'm, and I just kind of accepted it. I was like, oh, I was hoping this was going to turn around. I was hoping that Eugene was going to be better, but he's not. Yeah. And that's just what this is. And I've just got to accept it. And that made me accept it. But then the second thing is I realized... This is technically a book of letters, but I think it's also sort of a book of poetry. Ooh. Like, the letters are actually really beautifully written. I was just thinking that I, about that letter. Yeah, I was like, it's yeah, so nice. It's really nice. And I wasn't thinking about that yeah. when I was originally reading. I was reading it for the, the content. I was right. like, what are you saying? What's the plot? How is this moving the plot along? Where have you guys seen each other? Where have mm -hmm. you met? What's going on in your life? I wasn't really thinking about how the letter was written yeah and then it clicked part way through where i was like wait actually these are sort of poems like they're so beautifully written mm -hmm. hervé like like writes very beautifully and very powerfully and is really like putting his heart out there yeah <laughs> like in a way that's stressful where you're like wow this isn't uh, this is un it feels unfair that it's not being uh reciprocated right. but it's very interesting. Also, he's kind so, of just like, here's another poem. Here's another poem. Here's another poem. Read my shit. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, I yeah. I kind of like that. Yeah. <laughs> it's really interesting. And you and it's so in that way, it's actually very fascinating because you're reading these letters and you're like, oh, God, when I flip the page, God, do I hope that Eugene has responded. <laughs> right? And you flip it and it's two more letters uh, from Hervé. And you're like, no. <laughs> and you flip it and you're, come on, Eugene, you flip it. Nope. But two more letters from What if Eugene never Hervé. responds? What if it's yeah. just... You don't know until you until you read it. It's so interesting. Cool. So I actually am enjoying it. I'm finding it interesting. I'm not loving it, mm -hmm. but I'm finding it very interesting. So I am enjoying yeah, it. Yeah, I feel like on sense. your journey of reading letters, you'll get to really see the whole like wide scope it's gonna be of what they spectrum. can be. Yeah. yeah, of what of what a letter collection can be, which is definitely I'm finding it fun. I'm finding it interesting. Very and hopefully cool. I'll be able to finish it because I've actually only sat down to read this thing two times and I, it was so easy to push through like a quarter of it at a time. Yeah. I actually took it to the hospital today and read a letter and I was like, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's like, are you okay? And you're like, oh, Eugene. <laughs> Eugene is stressing Oh, you mean my out. blood? My blood's fine. It's just this guy. <laughs> it's just this, this man dude. from the 80s. But that really is all that's going on with me reading wise. I did want to give a little a little side update okay. about reading though. Yeah. Because I've been thinking. Things aren't going as well as they need <laughs> to be going. I was just wondering about we're, that. We're we're not in danger zone yet. I think I've read Oh god, I keep forgetting to write down the books that I'm reading, which is that's a big really problem. problematic yeah. for my whole life. I think <laughs> I've read six books this year. Oh. Is that right? It's five or six. I can At see how that's a problem because that's the same amount I've read. <laughs> exactly. At this point, I should have read, like should have read, something or more along the lines of 10 yeah. to 15. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm, you could say it as I'm like a halfway behind, but it's, it's not as bad as if it was like July. Exactly. And I've You've got read... lots of time to There's catch up. There's lots of time to catch up, but... My point is, <laughs> if I don't change now, yes. it will become too impossible. Exactly. So basically, I've had a month where I base. So here's what happened. I was hoping, and it was stupid, but that's okay. <laughs> I was hoping that I would just read more. Yeah. Because I have this goal, I would just naturally read more. Yeah. That's obviously it's not, not how what's life happened. works. Yeah. 
So I need to institute a couple of strategies Ooh. and that is what I'm going to try and focus on this next week. So I've got a couple little ideas and I don't want to announce them until I figure out, okay. test them out to see. But some of those strategies involve like what I'm reading. So for example, reading sh only short books for a while yeah. or finishing books I've already started because those yeah. are easy wins and they count. It's finishing a Absolutely. book. I will have read the whole book. But then also like some time things like when should I be reading more? What activity yeah. should I be doing to make myself read more? So going to start trying to uh, figure out more of a system because I think that's what I need yeah. more than anything. It's just being a little bit more more on top of the yeah. schedule yeah regimented that's the word cool that's all i'm, excited to, say to, see, I'm excited to see how that works i'm excited yeah. to see how that works i've been doing a pretty good job of reading less so <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty happy about that and part of my strategy is kind of leads into what i'm reading now which is to read um longer books as soon as i start to like get caught up or get ahead i'm like let's just read a really long book and then slow it down yeah um so right now and you actually helped me pick this a tree grows right. in brooklyn by betty smith is what i'm currently reading i'm about 70-ish pages in. I'm still pretty early days, um, but it's a pretty long book. It's like just under 500 pages and it's a classic. So I'm just getting started, but I'm really enjoying it so far. I'm really glad you oh, picked awesome. this. At first I was like, cool. I don't really know how this is going to go. Like, I don't really know anything about the book other than that it's a coming of age classic. And um, mm -hmm. it came out in the 40s, but it's set at least right now in 1912. And it's set in Brooklyn, oh. obviously. And the main character is this young girl named Francie and she's 11 mm. and she has a younger brother who's 10. And so I'm like, okay, this is fun already. You've got a um, sister brother relationship going on, which you don't see too, cool. too often in books. And no, I, you don't. And I love I it because you and I both have younger brothers. So that's something yeah. that we're always looking for. Like I want to see that relationship totally. represented. So that's already starting out is really cool. Um, but it's, yeah, it's just like a coming of age story at the turn of the century. There isn't really a plot necessarily, at least not yet. It's kind of just about okay. her life and her, the family is quite poor. And so at the beginning of the story, Francie and her brother will like, go out and try and find like scrap metal that they can sell to this guy for a couple of pennies. Hmm. And then they're like, I've got two pennies. What am I going to spend these pennies on? And they're like so excited trying to figure out what they're going to do with their money. And so it's That's just like, it's very wholesome and cute, um, yeah. but a little bit bleak at the same time. So yeah. it's, it's got that good blend of like, okay, this is like the harsh realities, but seen through the eyes of a child, which I always really like. It's why I love coming of age stories. It's just a cool perspective. But what yeah. I actually read last night is a little bit more of the history of like the family on both sides like the mom's family okay. and their dad's family as well and sort of like yep. how they got to where they are now and normally I wouldn't find that very interesting but it's written in a way that makes it very interesting and engaging to read so so far I'm thinking this is a very accessible classic if anybody else is wanting cool. to read more classics okay. and is kind of scared so far I find this to be very easy to read um I would say like if you like To Kill a Mockingbird you could probably easily pick this up bit of a different vibe but also has some similarities mm -hmm. so yeah I'm liking it so far, but yeah, it's still early days, so I can't say for sure. But thank you for picking it for me because it's working out great so far. <laughs> Raylene set up a really fun game randomly. <laughs> she was like, okay, do you want to help me pick what I read? I was like, totally. And she's like, okay, I have a, a bunch of photos I'm going to send you. And I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> and so I got these really zoomed in blurry photos yeah. of five, I think, different yeah. covers. And two of them, I thought I knew what they were. Three of them, I for sure had no idea. And yeah. so I just kind of went off the vibe. I thought that one was a Tree Grows in Brooklyn. Yeah. And I chose it because I, um, for two reasons. One, I was like, I don't want to lose the thing that we did last year of reading more classics. Mm -hmm. Like, I think we both enjoyed that. Yeah. And so I was like, that would be a good way to, to keep doing that. But then the second was, I was like, I can't remember the last coming of age novel Raylene read. And you love yeah, reading coming of age novels. So I was like, this will be perfect. So I'm glad that it's working out. Yeah, so far so good. So we are now going to transition into the mail room. So you got to see our cool new title or, and or, if you're listening, heard our new little jingle for the mailroom. Mm -hmm. We're loving this segment. And so we got our amazing animator, illustrator, branding queen, Maddie Vion, to uh, help us out with a new little title segment. Yes. Pretty excited about it. And... Um, <laughs> I love her work and I love like the branding for Books Unbound. I just think it's the prettiest. It's so cute. 
It all worked it's out so well. cute so <laughs> if you uh yeah if you want to check out maddie's work we'll link maddie for sure um in the co- in the comments in the description so mm. that you can go follow her because she's such a great illustrator like it's true. honestly this is kind of <laughs> cheesy but like her instagram is one of the only instagrams i miss because oh. i loved seeing her artwork yeah regularly it was so beautiful um but yeah let's let's talk mail room yeah. mail room uh how about you start us off really and what do you what did you find yes yeah, so obviously there's a lot of um responses to your engagement so i got a couple of those but i also tried okay. to find some things that were unrelated but it was hard it was really hard um <laughs> on our patreon i would say 99 percent of the comments were just congratulations so it was <laughs> which is so very nice, nice. like very nice the whole week was really really nice messages flooding in left yeah. right and center saying congrats thank you Just it really did love. actually add it added to the joy of the whole thing absolutely it's it nice felt like to, everyone was happy just like it's just like a surge of joy um yeah but yeah i did get a couple that involved congratulating you guys so this one is from cedric who says congratulations mm. ariel and connor also something is in the air because the co-host on my other favorite podcast i listened to i saw what you did film podcast just announced that she is making or thinking of buying and operating a mobile book truck in rural new york oh. so i thought that was fun new i thought york. it was gonna be another engagement thing but no plot twist so did I. <laughs> <laughs> plot twist it's actually about another person making a book truck which is super fun that's cool um that and cool. then max says congrats on the engagement ariel i also got engaged on the docks in lunenburg <gasps> this past october so as your story oh went along i was just like omg omg <laughs> Which is That's so cute. so cute. So now you have an engagement buddy from the docks. <laughs> I imagine that hundreds of people have gotten engaged on the docks yeah. over the decade or over the centuries. That dock has been there for centuries. So that's yeah. really cool to think. That is yeah. awesome. Okay. And then this is also from our Discord from Lilaco. Lilaco? Okay. Sorry if I'm saying uh, that wrong. And this is from our um, a Hobbies discord chat which is one of my favorites to look at because people just post like what they've been crafting and stuff and yeah. um this person has posted a really cool um cross stitch that they've been doing oh! of stardew it's like the stardew so valley cute. house with the trees and a mushroom tree behind the house and um i just thought that was really cool so if anybody's in our discord you should check it out if you want to share your crafts join our discord <laughs> <laughs> and then oh this one from nora is exciting actually uh, it's from instagram so this is cool news because it's something that we wouldn't mm. have seen brenna thumbler posted that there mm. is a box set of the sheets trilogy coming out and it comes in yeah. a cool box that she also designed you probably can't see it but there you go it's got little ghosts oh, all over it's beautiful it. so if Classic anybody out there Brenna. doesn't already own the whole trilogy i only own the first one so i'm kind of considering buying this because i really want to read books two and three and yeah the box is so cute so just announcing that i don't know when it comes out uh september 10th so there you go okay and cool. then my last Good shout out yeah so then i've got a couple here actually i um recently this is a, another shout out to our patreon i recently mm. got found a new copy of albatross by terry fallis right fallis which i've got right here and so we're yes. doing another flight of the albatross i just wanted to shout it out it's <laughs> going to be too late by the time this comes out for any new people to know about it but just for those who don't know every time we find a copy of albatross <laughs> we ship it out to someone who doesn't live in canada because it's so hard to find outside of canada but the giveaway all happens on our patreon so if you ever want to yep. be part of those giveaways they happen on patreon and we don't really announce them on the podcast anymore they kind of just happen over on patreon so totally just so everyone knows that's the thing that happened but the question that i asked to for people to give their giveaway entries was what is the funniest book you've read and mm. i've got a lot of responses which actually it's kind of fun if you're looking for a funny oh, book just look at the responses in that flight of the albatross yeah, yeah. because there's like a hundred like funny books that people have talked about um huh. but this comment from alex made me laugh they said as i'm scrolling through my story graph this post has made me realize i really like books that punch me in the gut and make me cry or so mm. on edge i need to take frequent breaks it's time for me to branch out. <laughs> a lot of people said something along those lines too. People are like, I don't read funny books. Like maybe that's interesting. Maybe I should. Why am I so stressed out all the time? And then this was last was there one that you noticed people mention more than others? Like, did one come up? All... Um, a, a few times? people have mentioned the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas oh, Adams. Yeah. A few people that also mentioned Nothing to See Here by Kevin Wilson, which is a book that I recently got. And so I'm really intrigued about that. that and a few people have also mentioned uh, the author, Samantha Irby. She writes essay collections. Oh. 
So those are some. Oh yes, yeah, with, like the raccoon. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> so this those are some good suggestions, but there's like a lot a lot of um, variety on there. And the last mm. comment I got here is from Turna, who says, "I also want to reduce my social media use, but a big problem I'm having is that I don't always want to read, but it's my only other default. How do y'all find mm. something to do? For some reason, picking up a game or something feels like more effort, even though if I got into hmm. it, it wouldn't be. So I thought that was like fun, a little little bit of advice maybe we could give right now. How what else what else can you do if you're trying to get off your phone but reading isn't what you always want to do and i guess my answer is crafting yeah. that's just what like my go-to or but you can also like interpret that however you want like any kind of other hobby which could be you know playing a sport it could be just going for walks it could be yep. listening to music and just sitting there like you i, I think yep. that people are always always feel the need to like be entertained or always be doing something yes. and we've i think we've talked about this before when you read how to do nothing but yeah people just need to like learn to be okay with doing nothing i think just being yeah. at peace always trying to move something forward i don't know it's stressful <laughs> it's stressful to live it is like stressful that. so that no you're totally right i mean this sounds cheesy but I think just laying there f is cool. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Like just relax, I've been doing stretch. That, do I've been doing that a bit more lately where mm. I'm just like laying there. <laughs> and like, I don't, I'm not sleepy. I don't want to go to sleep. Yeah. I'm not there, to, but I'm just like, God, I don't know what to do. And I'm like, maybe I'll just lay here for a bit. And usually after a few minutes, I'm bored, mm -hmm. but I get an idea for what to do. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Give Instead of the time to think about it. Because that's what I think it is. I think you just sometimes you're like, God, I don't even know what to do. This doesn't feel productive. This doesn't feel right. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Right. And then you just end up getting back on your phone and watching another YouTube video yeah. or just like whatever and doing something. But if you actually just like, if you're okay with being uncomfortable for a few minutes, <laughs> yeah. usually you can push through that and breathe enough that you're like actually it would be nice if i got started on dinner or actually it would be nice yeah. if i uh went and played a game or whatever one thing that i would also say is like rest time doesn't need to be productive or or good or hard or, or useful or yeah. anything and i really think that there are like degrees of how unhealthy something mm. is for you so uh, for me personally scrolling on social media feels like it's quite unhealthy for me like yeah. it makes me feel agitated and stressed and upset and blah 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 watching a movie isn't the best but it's for me leagues better I than agree. the alternative I so i remove all guilt and watch more movies or yeah. remove all guilt and watch more tv because i'm like actually it is more calming it is more like I'm actually following a story that has a beginning, a middle and an end mm -hmm. on like Instagram reels or TikTok <laughs> where you're just like on, on an endless unstoppable yeah. machine. So maybe like reassessing a little bit what, why you want to be doing something other than being on social media and actually maybe movies, although they're easy and although yeah. you're still staring at a screen, it might actually and be. And it's a piece of art. So I mean, up. it's, it is art. it's kind of like reading a book. It's just faster. For sure. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, for sure. I know, I totally agree. So what what else do I do? <laughs> Freak out a little bit? <laughs> Spend way too much. My my one of my problems is that my default is email. I'm like, God, I haven't done anything. I guess there's all those emails I need to reply mm. to. And then I go to my email. That's something that I really want to stop doing, <laughs> but I don't know. That's one of the horrors of working for yourself. I guess. Yeah. Um Okay, I've got some comments from uh youtube that yeah, i pulled bring it on. and a lot of them were about the engagement and i was like that's okay that's fun yeah that's fun. so uh, there was like i said there was a couple of people who were worried okay <laughs> um, not about, about connor as my choice for a husband but i'll read both of these the first one is from fountain pen insanity 3344 <laughs> congratulations ariel i'm worried about you changing your beautiful hair before your wedding oh though. maybe you should wait to dye your hair peach until after the wedding i don't think the pinch hair <laughs> peach hair is so important that it needs to be done right now <laughs> and then not the mona lisa said ariel i'm so happy for you and so stressed about your hair being peach for your <laughs> wedding i'm sure it will be beautiful but i'm an anxious person so i'm a wee bit worried oh yeah let's, for you. let's ease everyone's minds <laughs> Let's ease everyone's minds. I'm not going to have peach hair at my wedding. You're not getting married I tomorrow. I will say, <laughs> no. I will say it would be pretty. Like, I, yeah. I've seen photos of people at their wedding with colorful hair, and I think it looks really cool. Mm -hmm. So I, I, it's a perfectly viable move. I just, 
want to have brown hair at my wedding because I want to look like myself at my mm-hmm. wedding. And that's for why me, I wore my glasses. My brown hair. A lot of people don't. Yeah, wear, yeah I they don't that. wear glasses if they wear glasses. And I'm like, dude, just because it's your wedding doesn't mean you have to look like a different person. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's tricky. So everyone everyone wants to do their own thing. I want to have brown hair at my wedding, but I'm not getting married this year, you guys. That's, <laughs> let's put no. that. The big thing was I got engaged this year. That's more than enough for me. Yep. Maybe I'll get married next year. Maybe I'll get married the year after that. Maybe but your hair will be purple. Lo- Who knows? Maybe my hair will be purple, <laughs> but I have loads of time to revert my hair if I want to. Yeah, the peach hair is probably Nobody not going to last that long, honestly. Like, we're going to yeah. do it, but... And we're gonna enjoy it, and it's gonna be awesome. But also, I just it like might it's, be like so, it's gonna fade September, so fast. and I'm like, okay, bye. Yeah, like I, I can't imagine. Yeah, I do. Think- we're not gonna have peach hair by the end of the year. I'm predicting that already. That's for sure. Yeah, it's definitely gonna fade fast. So I'm probably gonna have some manic panic on hand to re up it because yeah. I don't know what else we could do. I know. That's funny. Um, okay, I got this really nice comment from Koru Scott sixty five fourteen that says, "Congratulations, Ariel! I've been watching you consistently for five years and have been with the podcast since the beginning. It's the only podcast I listen to. I love that because I have that. I only listen to the Unmade podcast. It's the only <laughs> podcast that exists to me. I feel weird being so invested in a stranger's life, but I was immediately running over to my boyfriend yelling, "Ariel got engaged!" <laughs> and he knows exactly who I mean, despite not reading books or watching BookTube. Aww, I love that." comment because it was so sweet and i just feel really like loved by everyone right now and it it is funny how i've been online for 13 years sharing the my life and Mm -hmm. i it's in i don't feel like i'm a vlogger at all i've never been a vlogger i don't my content isn't actually about my life but obviously it seeps in everywhere Mm -hmm. and so it's just cool that everyone is everyone's being so nice for you my probably my favorite comment i found was at mj in canada of course Connor proposed to her. Ariel has her own book truck. Who wouldn't want to be with a woman like this forever? <laughs> it's true. Yeah, maybe the book truck is what just like put him over the edge. Like I have to do this now. <laughs> it's so funny. Um, okay, this comment from Neet Ju- Neet Ujai Swal, uh, 2927. What is this day? I went to a school trip. Taylor Swift announced a new album <laughs> and you got engaged. Congratulations. Best day ever. This made me laugh that my engagement got put next to Taylor Swift's new album. Yeah, just as important, if not more. Just as important. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, the final comments I wanted to pull and mention were these ones about um, the Kindle stuff. Because if you recall, we talked a lot right, about Kindle. Yeah. And our, our buddy who was having problems wondering what to do with her kindle we got these two ideas puff maggie says i own a kindle and very rarely buy ebooks from amazon i load the books from other stores into kindle via a program called caliber it's not super user friendly but it's made me stick to my kindle even when i don't want to support amazon and so i was like well that's really an interesting solution i haven't ever heard of caliber i don't really know what it is but uh, we had a couple of comments here and there mentioning caliber so i wanted to make sure that we mentioned that as an option um and then this other person says for uh soul blind one two three says raylene does your kobo have a browser because then you potentially could open the Libby website there. That's how I get books onto hmm. my e-readers. I think it might. So I'll actually try that. I'll try that. Yeah, because while it might be a little clunky to set it up, if you could just use Libby from the browser, that might be another option. Yeah, because every time I want to load a book on, I'm like, I got to fire up my computer and I got to put yeah. it in there. And it's not like that annoying, but it's a little annoying. <laughs> it's a little annoying. Yeah. Well, there you go. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us for this episode. I hope you're doing well. <sighs> I I'm excited to read this week. I feel like I'm gonna figure something's gonna click. Yeah. Do you know, I don't know why I think that, but okay. I feel like something's gonna click. <laughs> yeah. And I'm gonna become a reading machine. That's awesome. Um, <laughs> we're gonna go record our Patreon mini podcast, Movie Tub, mm-hmm. where we talk about the movies and shows that we've seen. I have seen so much stuff that I'm excited to talk about it. Cool. And if you want to check that out, it's on our Patreon, which is the only way that this podcast <laughs> makes money. So if you like it, maybe check it out. <laughs> Patreon.com forward slash Books Unbound. Woo. Also, we have merch I just realized. I guess we made money through that, but we don't have ads, damn it. <laughs> so anyways, thank you guys so much. And we'll talk to you next week. Bye. Bye.